Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. The vanity code to add us on the Roku.com website is Dwyer Boxing News, one word, right? On iTunes, same thing, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, boxing is a sport we know and love, right? But understand, the sport still has a back alley component to it, right? Let me point out that if you have inside information about a fighter's preparation, you could make a mint betting on the sport. Let's talk about a great interview that's up right now on a British site, The Independent, Right? It's an interview of, in my opinion, a great but historically underrated former champion. A guy with one of the best jabs I've ever seen in my life. And that's Larry Holmes. And Larry Holmes talks about how he got the Mike Tyson fight. Right? Let me point out too. Let's roll back the clock a little bit. I know it's hard to believe today, but understand there are many people who believe that Larry Holmes had a legitimate shot on Mike Tyson. Right? I would argue that prime Larry Holmes, 10 years before Larry fights Mike, if that Larry Holmes had popped in the ring with Mike Tyson, I'd take that Larry Holmes over Mike Tyson. Larry had a great jab, much better than Buster Douglas's jab, right? Larry did a lot of things very, very well. Well, understand, the way he got the Mike Tyson fight, according to Larry, was that he was home one night with his family. There was a knock on the door. This is how the sport comes together. There was a knock on the door. Larry answers the door. The guy at the door is Don King. Don King says to Larry, Hey Larry, I have a fight for you. Larry says, Look man, Don, I've been retired for two years. By the way, this interview is up at the independent. Uh, .co.uk Right? Larry says, Don, I've been retired for two years. Right? Guys look at each other. Larry says, Hey, you know, Don, who do you have in mind for me to fight? Don says, uh, Mike Tyson. Larry, keep in mind, Larry's been retired. Larry's been living the retired life. He's not in fighting shape, right? He would need a map to get directions to go to his own training camp. Right, Larry says, Mike Tyson. You know, I'm not, I'm not in shape to fight Mike Tyson. You know? So then, of course, Don King drops the deal closing line. I'll pay you $3.5 million. Right? Larry looks at Don, looks at his wife, and then says, okay, you know, if the fight's six months out. Right? I'm not in shape to fight Mike. Right? I would need for the fight to be six months from now. I believe Don is there in December. Don King says, okay, yeah, Larry. Yeah, let's make it six months out. You got a deal. That night, Don King pays Larry Holmes half a million dollars. Right? As Larry says, I got half a million dollars in my pocket. I could take my wife out. You know, we could do a lot of things. Right? And keep in mind, Larry's a guy who managed his money well. Right? He still owns a lot of Eastern Pennsylvania. So, of course, after Larry a deal, uh, agrees to a deal with Don King for a fight against Mike Tyson six months down the road, he later gets a call from Don King about two weeks later. And Don King says, hey, Larry, I, I can't get that fight for six months down the road. I'm going to need for you to fight Mike Tyson now. 
and what now meant was next month. Well, I keep in mind, Holmes, by his own admission, wasn't in fighting shape. Would have needed six months to get in shape against the then dominant champion. Right? Of course, because Larry had already accepted the half a million dollars and because the idea of getting another three million dollars was exciting to him, went ahead and did his best to train to fight Mike Tyson. The Larry Holmes you saw in the ring with Mike Tyson had trained for less than two months. <clears throat> now if you look at the film of the fight, it's great footage because Larry's up on his toes early and Larry actually is doing very well. Now keep in mind, this is Holmes after losing to Michael Spinks twice. This is not prime Larry Holmes. For those who don't recall, Larry was on the verge of breaking Rocky Marciano's record when he lost to Michael Spinks. Right? Larry was an unbeaten fighter after more than 40 fights. He was a great fighter. <clears throat> then he lost a debatable decision to Michael Spinks. And then Spinks was able to win the rematch. Right? So this is Larry Holmes after his own Waterloo. Right? This is not prime Larry Holmes. This is Larry Holmes after a multi-year retirement. He comes in the ring up on his toes. He's circling Mike Tyson. He's throwing a jab. He looked great. Then, of course, we get to the part of the fight where stamina starts to matter. Larry Holmes is over by the ropes. According to Larry Holmes, he had Tyson set up for an uppercut. The problem was his hand got caught up in the ropes. Mike Tyson then hits him with a couple of shots and takes out Larry Holmes. The point I'm making is simply this. That's the sport of boxing. Guys knocking on your door, right? You think these guys had a written contract? You're accepting half a million dollars in an oral promise for a fight six months from now. The promoter then calls up and tells you, guess what? The fight against a dominant young lion is actually going to be next month. You're a great fighter with a great record, but you understand this chance to get three and a half million dollars won't come along every day. Right? You want the money. It's a nice retirement gift. You're going to hit the gym. You're going to do the best you can, but you're not going to be who you could have been had you had six months to prepare. Right? Understand, casual gamblers will look at that. And they'll say, hey, it's Holmes against Mike Tyson. They're not going to think in terms of, this is Larry Holmes on, you know, a few weeks training camp. This isn't the Larry Holmes who's had a full training camp. This is Larry Holmes after two years away from the game. Trying to return to the game. To fight the game's best. Right? That's boxing. That's the way business was done. Right? Let me just say, too, think about it. Don King shows up unannounced at Larry Holmes's door, somehow is able to pay Larry half a million dollars that day. Right? That's the sport we're following. Let's talk about a fight that's being discussed in the junior middleweight division 154 pounds right now understand <clears throat> that Oscar De La Hoya's mandatory contender at 154 the man who currently holds the WBC silver light middleweight title is the man Anthony Mundane right now it's becoming increasingly apparent that Floyd Mayweather doesn't want to fight Mundine for a host of reasons. One of them is that Mundine is a very 
difficult opponent. Mundine's a world class fighter. Right? Another is that this is prize fighting. And Mundine right now may not carry the box office that perhaps a Manny Pacquiao or an Amir Khan would bring to Mayweather's bottom line. Right? So, Mundane, eager for a title. Apparently he's on the verge of signing the fight IBF World Light Middleweight Champion Cornelius Bundrich. Right? Let me say this. In my opinion, this fight's a mismatch. What you have to do is look at the heights of the fighters. Understand, Mundine is a bit of a switch. He's a great defensive fighter, but he also has a pretty good jab when he wants to use it. He can maintain distance when he wants to. He can keep you outside. Mundine is 5'11". Cornelius Brundridge is something like 5'7". There's a huge height gap here. I believe there's a huge size gap here. Understand, Anthony Mundine used to be the super middleweight champion. Right? He's a physically bigger man than Cornelius Bundridge. Understand, too, that Bundridge isn't a Joe Fraser type fighter. In other words, he's not going to bounce his way in. He's not going to fight low. He fights high. He likes to stand up. He's not going to bend his knees, get low, bounce, get inside, and then take out your rib cage. That's not who he is. Right? He's going to try to box Anthony Mundine. He's going to try to set up big counters. I don't believe he's going to be close enough to Mundine to be effective. If that fight is signed, put me among those who believes that Anthony Mundine will be the next IBF junior middleweight champion. Understand Mundine is a different type fighter than Carlos Molina, who Brundridge just beat. Right? Molina is a guy who likes to get inside and wrestle with you. Right? Mundine, very different. Very different personality. Right? Mundine is a guy who, you know, when you get inside, he can defend what you're doing. When you're outside, he'll keep you outside and throw hard punches. Right? I like Mundine because of length, because of a jab, because of superior defense, and because the fight likely would be in Mundine's backyard of Australia. I like Mundine over Cornelius Brundridge if that fight ever happens. Now, they're negotiating that fight. Don't be surprised if you hear about one of the fighters getting a knock on the door from some promoter carrying a bag of money with the promise on a fight in a few months because we know from a good source, Larry Holmes himself, that that's the way business at times is conducted in the sport. By the way, Don King, remains to Vern's current promoter, is still very much in the boxing game. Let me hear from you. If you have thoughts on Larry Holmes, his legacy, his fight against Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson's legacy. If you have thoughts on this possible matchup for the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship between Mundane and Cornelius Brundridge, I hope you leave them here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.